Hello, here with you again for the Master Vyacheslav Tilichev, and it's a final video lesson on the prophylaxis theme dedicated to the article Developing Prophylactic Thinking Part 3. Link to the full article you can find in the description below the video. In the following position, clear that advantage on the black side. They just have an extra exchange. But here is two important moments which should be spotted and understood. Black pieces arranged in such way that they fail to attack anything in white's position. Here the most vulnerable place is a pawn on e2, but extremely hard to create an initiative against it, and even more, the second moment, that white want to transport their rook on d2 through the d1 square, so defending the pawn and just build some kind of positional fortress. However, Vasily Ivanchuk against Evgeny Boreyev find a way to combine these two factors in one and play bishop c2 not only taking control about d1 square, but also at the appropriate time preparing the bishop a4 and later bishop b5 maneuver, after which pawn on e2 will become a real weakness. For example, in the beginning position, rook e8, take on aim e2 pawn immediately, looks good, but not protects us from white's development. After rook d1 and rook d2 later, they defend on e2 and have reasonable playing. This type of prophylax, which you could see after bishop c2, called active. At the first sight, black just protect themselves from the clear positional freed, but they not worsen the position of their pieces. On the contrary, they find a way to protect and to threaten at the same time. In the next position, you can see that it is still opening, and both sides create their own plans. I think you know that such kind of pawn formation that black chose called the hedgehog, due to scratch a looking pawn on 6 rank. Black's plan to play d6, later a6, and put the knight on d7. You should understand that it's very important factor to put knight exactly on d7. Here he much more flexible compared to the alternative on c6. He doesn't cover the bishop on b7, so black creates a pressure on weak e4 pawn and even improve this pressure by probable jump on c5. No doubts, Viktor Korchnoi know this typical arrangement and find a way to put problem with it to his opening Bartholomew Macheya. Should be noted that direct e5 untimely here and looks very dangerous from positional point of view. After knight h5 takes, takes, white temporarily protect themselves from d6. But now the bishop on b7 became really dangerous, and also black always have idea to play something like f6, and after exchanging of pawns, we look at the white's king side. So we going back to the beginning, and see that Karchnoi played rook d1, and it's clear that black have some problems with the realization of their plan. For example, d6, here just losing the pawn after e5, knight e8, and bishop g3 and pawn on d6 can't be protected. For example, going back to rook d1, logical queen c7, this idea to move d6 later, met with knight b5, and after queen c5, b4, queen h5, takes, takes, white put their knight on d6. Of course, it's not what black wants from this position. Such a usual move like rook d1 forces black to solve really difficult tasks. Of course, they ju just can finish the development by knight c6, but Krishna completely destroyed the harmony of black's plans and without any doubts win the opening battle. Very important to feel such moments like this. Rook d1 became really annoying for black, while I'm sure most of people prefer just finish their development and play some normal moves like bishop e2. In the next example, it's important to find a key square in white's position. To do it, first of all we need to determine the most strong factor in it, the pawn chain and exactly the pawn on d5, which constrains black's opportunities and blocks weak pawn on d6. Looks like the main element in this chain is a2 pawn, but in fact it's a pawn on c4. It helps to our nail on d5 and exactly on it black built all their plane. And even if it normally protects right now, it doesn't mean that few moves later this pawn will not get under the real danger. 
Ruslan Irujanov chose a reasonable decision to overprotect it and played knight d1 going on e3. After takes on d5, rook g8, bishop d3, knight h5, takes, black takes on g7 with knight, but perhaps better was to play king g7, saving the possibility to play knight f4. But the plan after knight g7 is pretty obvious. The chief of base army, Aman Murat Kakagildiv, want to transfer their knight on d4 through f5 square. So white played knight e3, over protecting the pawn on c4 and also taking f5 square under the control. By the way, note that with over protection of c4 square, white also gain another profits. Knight on e3 controls f5 square and also covers the e-file. In other words, knight on e3 just stays much more better and flexible than on c3. b takes c4. I think better was just play f5, creating the idea to play f4 and full of fight ahead here. After the mistake takes on c4, finally black's nurse breaks and they open the b-file. But they will never get to the c4 pawn anymore, and already white organized their own plane on open line. Takes f5 and queen c3. And now looking on the diagram, and it's clear that white's pieces stays perfectly. But look at the black's knights. One of them nothing doing on g7, another have even more worse perspective. He need go back or queen on d8 will not be able to move. So black play knight b7, here, white capturing the open file. Black tries to exchange the queens, here, 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 takes, finally captures the file and weaknesses on a6 and d6 will decide the game. The next game between Sergei Dolmatov and Janusz Kosielski is just a storehouse of information about overprotection. Dolmatov overprotects everything in his position. Look at the board. White is a pawn up, but black also have strong sides. They press on e4 and b5 pawns. They have two clear ideas. First and most direct is to play a4 and a3, breaking the queen side. Another one is to play rook c8, at some moment freezing this rook c3 and knight e4 later, breaking the center. All white's advantage rests on the c3 knight, but here he is in danger, so Dolmato find non-standard way of overprotection. Knight d2, rook c8 and knight db1. A very original knight maneuver. First of all, freed of sacrificing on c3 doesn't exist anymore. However, black tries to animate their initiative. a4. And now direct knight a3 leads to a trouble after take on c3, take, d5, and black opening the bishop and counterplay enough at least for the equality. So going back to a4, black frees also this a4, a3 here, and white again protect their monumental knight on c3, rook d3. Now black can't play a3 because after just takes it leads to nothing. So they played knight bd7, rook hd1, knight c5, takes, takes, knight a3, and now our protection was completed, and clear that whilst have all of benefits in their position, and even more, now they also take a control on the d5 square, and after they will play knight d5. But of course, 
Nemtsovich teaching about all protection not necessary to bring to the absurd. For example, in this game between Mikhail Botvinnik and Sala Flor, famous world champion play mysterious Rook F D1, putting all major pieces on the D file. Of course, it was absolutely unnecessary here because pawn on d5 already have three defendings this one, this, and this one. So, black even have not got a fritz on it. I don't think that it have direct influence on the final result, but no doubt that it was just a losing of tempo. For example, normal way was rook e2 trying to take control on the opened e-line. Later white can try to double the rooks by playing rook e1. A mysterious rook moves team of course deserves individual article. So here just a last example which shows how it can happen in usual practice game. Rook g1. About what you think when so moves like this? Just a loss of tempo. How putting the rook on totally closed line could be useful? So let's go back and try to understand the logic of Turkish GM Suat Atalik. He saw that his opening Yahya Eskanderi wanted to break his pawn structure after h5 h4 promotion. But why not just to prevent it by h4? The point is that in such close position like this, all pawn promotion should be done with increased accuracy. For example, somewhere in future, perhaps will be good if white can play h3 and g4, but how we know pawns are not going back. But if not play h4, hard to see the way to protect h5 h4 promotion. Atalic solved this problem by tactical decision, which only at first sight looks dubious and senselessly. The rook g1. So black played h4 and after takes takes became obvious why white play root g1. Now they have a control on the g file and especially on the g5 square. So it's impossible to play here rook h4 due to bishop g5. So black need to play queen take h4 and now after bishop g5 queen h7 after take on h2 plan castle black's queen risk to not go back into the camp so going on h7 and now knight b5 white piece is much more active than opponents remember sometimes truth hides in such senseless seems move like rook g1 I hope that this lesson was useful for you and helps to improve your chess playing. Up to new meetings on training channel Friendly Chess.